there's certain individuals out there on the internet that like to, you know, stir things up. Uh, I am a hobbyist. I am not a professional luthier. I am not a professional auto repair person or a professional painter by any means. But just goes to show, these videos have all just gone to show that you don't have to necessarily, um, you know, be said profession to do said things to your guitar as long as you have the right or sufficient tools and the knowledge and information which can be freely uh, found over YouTube and other text-based websites. Shall I do it? I think I do it. So, I'm a hobbyist. Uh, I've dabbled in a bunch of different things all my life. I've been taught a bunch of different things from other people. Uh, some of them professionals, some non-professionals. I am not a body and fender guy. I do not even like doing body and fender work. Um, I am not a professional painter. My father is not a professional painter. He started as basically a hobbyist doing custom paint jobs for himself on items that he owned and then started people coming in saying wow you know i like that uh can you do that for me and that's how my father got started doing it it's always been a hobby guitars to me has been a hobby and the one thing about guitars too is that you know i've been a hobbyist with guitars for a shorter time than Terry 3G's has. He's been doing this longer than I have. And even to be a hobbyist, you know, from what his title says, refinished. Well, when you restore or refinish something, you're wanting to make that better than what it was, not worse. Didn't exactly come out the way I wanted, but I'm going to stress this one thing. My overall goal was the fact that when I previously refinished this body, I did not take the necessary precautions to actually bring the levels of the body up to appropriate levels. I'm going to have levels. to clamp down the body, and I'm going to have to use the planer and kind of go over the top of it. I need to knock it down about a sixteenth of an inch off the top of this body in order to make this work out the way I need it to work out for the new veneer and the finish on. So I picked up this nice. So this is where Terry 3G's really tries to make himself look like he knows something. When I did the Epiphone Spider 3 or Spider 2 guitar, uh, I had to sh shave off the top of the body to compensate for the veneer and the epoxy resin that I was putting on there so that the neck pocket, pickup cavities, and bridge could all still line up just the way they were when they were stock. Now, what he's talking about here is I don't understand his common sense about removing the finish and having to put that back in order for things to line up. If that was the case, because I have refinished so many guitars in my time that I've been doing this, and I've never had a problem with anything not lining up or anything actually as far as problems go where I had to make sure I put the same amount of material that I took off back now this gets even better and now I'm understanding what his common sense was because he screwed up so what does that mean that means that uh, when you remove material whether it be paint uh, primer body filler would. To bring the body back up to more within the standards of where it was finished or where it should be, you have to put said materials back into place. So in this instance, that's basically what I've done. So that said, I'm done screwing around with the body. The body stays how it is. Maybe it gets a polish to try to get scratches and what out furthermore but again the reality is is the guitar is like 
oh, almost 20 years old. So, I mean, the fact of the point of me trying to bring it back to a factory mint finish, I think it's kind of pointless considering, well, you know, the headstock isn't exactly perfect either. Like, it's not. It's got bumps, you know. It's got dust, uh, you know. Particularly there, it's got notches out. So it's it's not perfect. It's, it's meant to be exactly what it is. And that is brought up to A Terry 3G uh, playing special. specs. Now, again, a, a quick bit of history about this guitar is it is indeed a S470. What a coincidence. I had the same one. Which all of them did come in a HSH configuration. And uh, I wasn't a fan of the configuration. And so, uh, again, I proceeded to convert it to an HH body. But it is the original 470 HSH body. Uh, the other thing, too, as well, too, the first years of them came with this cool... If you notice the angle of the plates for the locking nut, yeah, he's got them on wrong. Uh, I did have one kind of minor hiccup. Uh, near around the um, near around uh, the heel area beyond that everything went appropriately and again the only thing that is preventing this guitar from actually being fully stock is of course the middle pickup and I'm missing some hex bolts in the uh, original uh, Ibanez Zero trim See, this is how you know somebody doesn't know what the hell they're talking about. Here is a Ibanez ZR trim. All right, this is a spare that I've got. You look at the back of it, there are no hex bolts back there. The reason why is because this screw right here, which I am unscrewing with my finger, I'm getting tired of hearing him bitch about shit that he does not know anything about. This screw right here goes in the back. of each one of these you screw it in and that's how you set your intonation Ooh, you learn something every day don't you so again start at the back there's the one point in question you can see where the neck meets the body there's a slight curve there so so let me end this pretty quick because we all know where this ended up you did a shitty job yes scratches all over it you can plainly see it blames it on the wax saying that it's scuff marks from the wax uh later on saying that you could rebuff it or something whatever okay it's another terry 3g special all right now the thing about it is is there was nothing wrong with this guitar when he got it in the first place It had one big chip on it that was a decent size about the size of a quarter So he decided to fucking paint it stripping it down Probably to bare wood probably taking wood off of the body itself That's why he's showing right now and explaining that he had to uh, Which I'll put that part of the video back in Explained that he had to mill the washers for the neck mounts. Um, he doesn't even know what a mill is. All right, I've got a mill. He's got a drill. All right, and he probably used the wrong bit for milling. So he says that hole. If you use a regular drill bit, he's stupid because a regular drill bit has got a tapered uh, angled tip to it. And what's going to happen is when you tighten those screws up. Uh, that washer is going to embed itself in that angle and sooner or later what's going to happen is that what's going to crack um, you should use a bit that has a flat bottom on there so and there's a little tip on it to where you can keep your center point 
but yet make a flat surface for that washer to sit on. Yeah, this guy has no common sense at all as far as knowing or what he's doing. As far as the bridge goes, <clears throat> that's funny because he's had, he's had this guitar for a while and has had time to research what that little screw is on the side of the, uh, uh, the saddle to understand what it's for. And yeah, so he has no brains. And uh, again, with me saying getting the body correctly to level, I got these actual holes uh, milled out perfectly. Uh, you can see smudges on my hand. All right, so his whole thing about this is basically saying that he took the finish off and he had to put the finish back on in order to correct problems that was caused by removing the finish. That's bullshit, all right? He cut too much, sanded too much wood off the body, screwing up the way things fit. That's how that works, okay? As far as saying, well, now the neck bolts are, are level and I had to mill out. It's like, yeah, you sat there with the fucking sandpaper, probably with some type of a electric uh, uh, hand drill with a pad on it or something, and sat in one spot too long and ended up removing too much meat off the wood and making a flat spot to where now you had to drill those holes deeper in order for the, the neck bolts to fit properly you are such a fuck up it's unbelievable people out there do not follow what this guy is telling you do not follow or even try to do what this guy is showing you because you are going to end up with problems hobbyist or not this guy is a fucking hack